Dead Island 2 was a mixed bag when it released, nearly one year ago. But what has changed? Is it worth playing? This video might surprise you. As you might know, on this channel, I give my honest opinions and don't just agree with other videos and meat rides so I don't get hate comments. I just give my 100% honest thoughts. Let's now find out whether Dead Island 2 is worth your time or not. New updates. Since release, what updates has Dead Island 2 got? Well, there is now DLC for this game, which is rather short and doesn't change much in terms of gameplay, but it does now include a new segment of the map, along with new weapons like a crossbow, but your enjoyment for this will be short-lived. To put it simply, I wouldn't trade my nan's life for it. Apart from the lackluster DLC, all changes since launch are mainly just bug fixes, but there definitely has been some changes to the gameplay, which I haven't seen many people talk about and we'll dive into that very soon the graphics and setting this game looks visually impressive it truly feels like a proper current gen game which isn't always the case nowadays the graphics are definitely one of this game's strongest points as not only does the surroundings look bloody amazing it has some of the best looking zombies i've ever seen in the video game even in 2024 and that is one huge compliment especially when you compare it to the frog free character models in other games that honestly look like a product of an incest relationship so yes the game looks good visually however the premise of this not being a big open world does really suck only exploring small segments of the map at a time before needing to sit through loading screens to explore the next area is still awful the explorable areas always feel small and limited and it's annoying having to walk specific routes because certain roads are blocked off and not being able to drive vehicles like in the first game sucks even more. Blaring it down the street with about 80 kneecaps on your windscreen from twatting into zombies at 100 miles per hour would be so damn fun like in the first game. Even if we just had a small fully explorable map with vehicles that would be much better than what we have here and this is definitely one of the game's biggest cons as the map just feels so limited and restricted. Gameplay. So at launch I complained how difficult it was at times to kill zombies. It seemed to take about 124 hits to kill a single zombie. It's like seeing an old bastard who's royally soiled his pants pathetically hitting a punch bag. Well since then, the gameplay definitely has been adjusted to make killing zombies slightly easier, but it does still become a chore with certain types of zombies and can still feel unnecessarily difficult. The gunplay feels good and satisfying, but as soon as you start wielding heavy melee weapons like knives and brass knuckles the clunky melee combat becomes instantly visible it still feels slow and sluggish and dodging zombies only seems to work when it wants to which makes things so much more frustrating and as soon as you start using the heavy melee weapons like a sword it feels like i could go watch oppenheimer and return back before the sword has twatted a zombie it feels seriously slow and clunky but the amazing gore physics do kind of help make up for it. compare this combat to the first game it just doesn't feel like much has changed which is a big shame but at least drop kicking zombies is still addicting as hell for some reason although it's utterly pointless like the crease on your trousers that make you look like you have a bulging rod on and i do love the fact you can use the surroundings to kill zombies it's cool watching them react and die if charged with electricity when walking through water i do still wish there were hordes of zombies in certain areas of the map though just imagine Imagine the carnage if there was a huge horde of zombies chasing you. It would complement the amazing gore physics so well. Sadly, the zombies do spawn in rather small numbers, but at least the visual pop-ins of seeing them spawn in has been reduced, although you can notice it at times. And you do 
see a lot of the exact same zombie NPCs, but due to how good they look, I don't think it's worth slating the game for this. But if you do care about the fine details, this may annoy you. To be fair, you'll have their heads twatted off most of the time, so you probably won't even notice. Gameplay is very much a mixed bag. Killing zombies can be clunky and frustrating, especially when confronting the big pricks, but the gore physics do make it entertaining. The story. So at this point, the game's been very average. The game's been very average. Surely the story will be the game changer. Well, the missions are your standard go here, kill zombies, go there, kill zombies, with boss battles sprinkled in between, which as discussed, can be incredibly frustrating at times. And the actual storyline itself is cliche and is essentially The Last of Us Part 1, but done a lot worse. To its credit, there were a few missions that were fun, and do stick in my mind, but it does become repetitive real quick. There just needs to be things to do in between, instead of killing zombies with these clunky combat mechanics 24-7, whilst the other characters chill in bed and don't help you whatsoever. You lazy bellend. There are no missions where any NPCs in this game actually help you fight zombies, which really bugged the life out of me. Out of all the characters in this game, not a single gobshite gives you any help. So yes, sadly, the story is also rather average, if not slightly below, if I'm being truly honest. Look, don't get me wrong, no one's expecting a story that's on the same level as The Last of Us, but Jesus, at times, it feels like a chore playing through the story, doing the same thing over and over, with characters less interesting than the puddle of piss that missed the toilet in your bathroom, and at times, you'll be very close to almost smashing your controller through the nearest skull once you encounter to one of these gigantic bunders due to how hard it can be to kill them if you have wank weapons. So let's ask the all-important question. Should you play Dead Island 2 in 2024? If you are a fan of zombie games, now that it's reduced in price and is also on the Xbox Game Pass, it is worth playing as the graphics are amazing and the gore physics will blow you away. But apart from that, it's rather average in all other aspects. If you played the first Dead Island, it's hard not to feel like like the first game was better, albeit with worse graphics. But then again, this game went through development hell, so it wouldn't surprise me if they had to cut out a load of their ideas and just release it as is. Nonetheless, you will have fun playing this game, despite its flaws. But what do you think? And do you think it is a step down from the first game? Make sure to leave a comment down below, I would love to know your thoughts. And if you would like to see any of my other brutally honest gaming videos, for example, whether Starfield is finally worth playing or not six months later and what has changed make sure to click the card on screen to check out that video thank you guys for watching as always i really appreciate it and have a great rest of your day